Hey YouTube, this is React Pack. I'm Thorn. I'm Rose. I'm Nikki. And this is the last episode of Vinland Saga. So, what do you guys think is gonna happen? I don't. I'm hoping he goes home. Goes home. I don't Probably know if he will. Not likely. I, I think Almost definitely yeah, not. Yeah, they might. They might. I think Leaf maybe might convince him we'll stop at home first and then go to Vinland if he decides to go with Leaf. But he he looked like he might be willing. If you get Thorfinn on the boat, you can go anywhere you want. <laughs> But yeah, yeah. so uh, we also have Asklad's gonna have to deal with the whales thing. Mm. So I think that's Thor, about it. And Thorkel knows now that Asklad loves origin. whales. Yeah. yeah, and other animals too. So let's get into it, guys. Thank you very much for being here. And if you like the video, please remember to leave a like and subscribe if you want to see more. And if you want to see the, yeah, this is it. But if you want to go see the next episode of other shows, you can go ahead and check out our Patreon, or if you just want to support us. We're going to be replacing this show with something of our choosing, and the next time a show runs out, we'll probably do a poll for it. So, see you guys in the discussion. <laughs> No. <laughs> and I see him go so fast. <laughs> it's like, is he gonna kill him? <laughs> Playing his cards. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, show generosity also right here. Dark <laughs> kill. It's like, oh, he's not gonna kill him. Oh dear. That's a long hug, my guy. He's very grateful. I'm very grateful. Oh dear, 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 oh dear. He didn't do anything. Nice. Oh, they're not the leaving bit. yet, though. Yeah, so. I mean, somebody's gonna come say something. Uh, figure something out. Freedom. Is he finally looking around him and seeing more world? The wind is telling him to go. Oh, no! But the jerky! <laughs> you turned your back for one second. I'm telling you, you keep your eye on him and push off from the land. Yeah, Take just leave Mord behind. <laughs> just attach him to the anchor. Oh <laughs> no. <laughs> oh no! Woohoo! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, 
<laughs> and endorphin may interrupt. Bro, well, it's killing two bird, killing one king with one sword. <laughs> That's the plan. But you're not in good, good. You're not good, Thorfinn. And he's mad, so he's gonna kill them all. Don't Dang. go in, Thorfinn. He can handle it. <laughs> Thorfinn's just chilling. <laughs> Right through the sword. I mean, the shield. Yeah, let's get out of here. <laughs> He's saying he has to kill him? Kill him good. Wow. Kill him good. Then... Yeah. Canute had to do oh, it. Oh, that's a different story than I expected. Oh, it wasn't Shell. He got his lungs. Lungs, yeah. Can you do it? He's like a little kid again. Dude. 
Great, now he gets locked up. Yeah. I don't know. Is this it? Are you finally letting go of him? Aww. Is Maybe it's just people from the story who will meet her yeah. in a way. I think there's a bunch of people that we won't know yet. Discussion. Discussion. The end of the prologue. Of the prologue. prologue. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So this, sh I don't know if you'll get it, because I don't know how much being on Amazon Prime Video hurt its viewership, mm. but this show is definitely setting up to be very, very long. Yeah. Uh, what do you guys think of the prologue? Uh, very emotional. Yeah, if that's the prologue, what is the rest of the show? Yeah. It's a saga. Right, it's a so saga. it's like, this is just like the beginning of Thorfinn's life, or if he's the main character still in the next one. Um, there's obviously going to be more, more people to meet, as we saw in the end screen there. Mm -hmm. So, there's more to the story than just his torn tormented childhood. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so it may be that the rest of the story is him letting go and adventuring, mm -hmm. or it could be there is a lot left to handle. We know, for instance, back on Iceland, where his family was, there was that slaver that guy, guy, Halfdan. Yeah, yeah. Halfdan. Who it seemed to set up was very dangerous. Mm. Uh, Thorfinn, however, is also very dangerous, but mm -hmm. I don't know how capable he would be by himself if he's now in a state of, he no longer has a vengeance driving him. Mm-hmm. Mm -hmm. Then again, without the vengeance driving him, he may be a far more uh, tactical fighter. Mm -hmm. No, the thing is, remember he hated the fighting. He did. So he only pursued it because he wanted to get better, so that he could fight Askeladd. Mm -hmm. So now that Askeladd is dead, and he doesn't even know what he's doing with his future anymore, because he didn't even he didn't even accomplish what he wanted, what he spent all those years mm -hmm. pursuing. Like he, like you said, he's gonna have to deal with that trauma, and then mm -hmm. will he even? continue honing his skills i wish he would i i, I feel like we he's gonna need some other focus i don't know what it's gonna yeah. be it'd be hard to forget for him especially i mean in anime many times people just don't forget their skills yeah but 
for someone like him, it makes a lot of sense because he's been doing it since he was six, mm-hmm. you know. And now, so it'll be like second nature. For yeah, him. he, he yeah. could stop for ten years, and he'd still probably have some inkling of what to do. Mm-hmm. Yeah, like Thor doing it. Yeah, that's oh, true. Yeah, yeah, Thor's was retired for how long? Yeah, <laughs> and an entire ship. Sister, but sister was like fifteen by the time he died, so it was like at least fifteen years he hadn't done any fighting. Speaking of which, uh, I wonder if he'll get his dad's boat. Askeladd? Mm. Askeladd has stolen, remember, his oh, dad's yeah. boat. And now uh, Askeladd's dead. The entire crew is dead. So, really, there's no one with a claim to that boat except for him. Where mm. is that boat? Because they traveled over land when they Well, when they, they came crossed, here, they traveled in they water. They traveled in it water, that's true. somewhere, probably. Yeah. Maybe they could, uh, he could have Leaf take a detour, grab it. Mm. It's probably a fight, because that's a good ship. Mm. <laughs> but, yeah. Uh, that's just something I never thought anybody brought up. But um, what do you think of that conclusion to Askeladd and Thorfinn's relationship? Um, fascinating. It's very complicated. It's, yeah, because while he hates him, he doesn't want him to die. Mm-hmm. Well, who hates him? Uh, well, what's his name? Thorfinn hates Askeladd. He doesn't want him to die. I don't. I don't. I think that's. I don't know if that's it. I think he wanted to be the one to kill him. Well, that's part of it. But I don't think he wanted him to die at all. Hmm. Well, it truth be told, I mean, yeah, he always had a thing about doesn't want to dishonor, be dishonorable and kill him in his sleep or something like that. But do you think it could be a case of... Remember back when he was talking to Canute and he was saying that there's a reason I don't... Uh, anything I say can have consequences, but it's kind of an excuse, but there's truth to it? Mm-hmm. Yeah. Do you think it could be a similar situation? Yeah. Where maybe Thorfinn, he doesn't want to be dishonorable, but it's also an excuse where he doesn't, doesn't want to kill, kill him. him? Yeah, that's what maybe. I think. Maybe. Because I remember, he was six, and he was yeah. raised... Basically He was by these people. By, yeah. So, th- yeah, he wasn't a good person to him, but he was his father in a lot of ways. He taught him yeah. a lot of things. Mm-hmm. Um, and and I, yeah. I would uh, want to say it's kind of vice versa where Askeladd hates kids, but he took care of Thorfinn. Mm. And he um, he even cared enough to give him advice before he died. Like, you know, and, and he even was like, why don't you just kill me so you can, you know, be OK. But obviously he knows that wasn't going to be good enough for Thorfinn. But he was like, what are you going to do now that I'm dead? You have to think about your future. Like, he's trying to get him to turn his mind around. Even though it's like pushing a large boulder right now. It's not really working because Thorfinn is so stubborn. So, but but it still showed that Askeladd cared enough to say this to him. Mm-hmm. So he, he cared in a way. Even mm-hmm. when the guards were finally pulling him out of the room. When he was trying to, like, get back to the body. It didn't even... It sound, he had the sounds of rage, but his face looked so confused. Yeah. Like, he didn't even know what he would do if he got to him, you know? Yeah. Yeah, so he's almost like, is he going to cry? Is he going to hug him? Is he going to stab him? He doesn't mm-hmm. know. Yeah. Yeah. I think, um, what was it? Remember when, in the last couple of episodes, uh, when they he had the duel with Askeladd, and he's like, you didn't kill me over these ten years. This is what I did in two years to my uh, father and his mm-hmm. family. I think it's, that's, Part of it is that Askeladd knew what his life would be afterwards. Whereas uh, Thorfinn, this is his whole life. Yeah, Askeladd. Like, sorry. Yeah, it's, it's his whole life. He has no after plan, so he's not pushing as hard because there's nothing else to it. It's like punching for a board or punching through a board. Mm-hmm. One is going to have more power mm-hmm. and more likely to break the board. Yeah, that's a good point because even Askeladd, when he was talking about how he killed his or made his plans to kill his father, he made preparations to be the one to inherit. Mm-hmm. Like he was saying how he was prepared for his life afterwards. You're, you're right. Mm-hmm. That's true. And that's something that Thorfinn lacked. Mm-hmm. Which is, I don't know. It's mm-hmm. unfortunate. But the whole beheading of the king was, yeah. I did not expect that. I like, neither did I. Like what was, like we saw him struggling to figure out a plan. And yeah. he really came down to okay. I have no choice. I have to be the bad guy. Yeah, I, I'm gonna it. have to die. <laughs> Kill this guy. Yeah. If I have to sail, save whales, this is the only way. Yeah, and Canute, he's like, he's I'm trying gonna to save have both. my king and my whales and eat it too. <laughs> what do you think about his declaration? Like what his true name was? Mm-hmm. Oh yeah. And all that. I think that was his last hurrah. He's like, well, I'm dying here. Yeah. So let's I, just declare I, it. I like to think that that yeah, it may be partially he knew it would make him seem insane. 
but he also was living out his greatest dream of taking over and stuff because I think that that is his real name and he actually is Artorius in the sense he did come back and save Wales mm, Wales yeah. would have been destroyed if yeah. he didn't do what he did yeah. true true and just it, it may have been just a couple of minutes but for a couple of minutes he was the glorious emperor defending mm, yeah. Wales mm. yeah how poetic and um Canute was the one to kill Ascalon. Yeah, I like how Thorkel. Thorkel can be like sometimes Thorkel is seems dense, but mm-hmm. he's really smart. And he yeah. he like the on the one hand he didn't like see through Ascalon's plan, yeah. and Canute had to show him. But once he saw that, he was like, oh well, I see what has to happen here. Mm-hmm. And he knew immediately, Canute, you have to be the one to kill him. It can't be me. Yeah, Thorkel, he gives off the vibe of just a barbarian, but he thinks a lot more about his actions. Yeah. It's just because he says the first thing that comes to his head, he often comes across as dumb. Mm. But like even when he slaughtered Asklad's first guys who are trying to swap sides, it may just seem, I don't take people who surrender, mm-hmm. but really it's, do you want to take people who just flip sides that easily? Yeah. yeah. And if you let them go, they're behind you, they could be anywhere, it could be part of a trick. Like There could be much more to what he's doing than yeah. it appears. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. And you lied. You said it during the this season that we wouldn't figure out what it means to be a true warrior. Like we had no answer this season. Oh, there. Well, I, I didn't. I didn't actually expect one because you see the thing is about being a true warrior is no one is there to say the exact definition. Mm. So I just wanted to, you guys to you know think of what you thought it would be, what the real wording is, and mm. stuff like that. Because I, I I do think there is no one definition. Yeah. I think that you can come to a conclusion of what people meant though. I but he said it in the end that um well he alluded to it in the end that him fighting with himself is how he becomes a true is what a true warrior does. Is that what he said? I thought he said um your real fight will be fighting with yourself to become a true warrior, which would then imply that it's a struggle to figure it out, but you have to fight with yourself to figure it out. I thought that's what he was saying. I don't know. But I do think we have a kind of solid basis for what it is, though. Mm-hmm. I didn't expect one, but on a second view, I do think we have a solid basis for where with the comments and uh, looking at the scenes where it was, uh, what was it, to, do, willing to do whatever it takes to um, make the world a better place, almost. Yeah. I can't remember exactly what it was, but it was like Thoris died to prevent further bloodshed he was willing to give himself up for it whereas Canoes kind of has that idea that humanity needs that kind of thing but he's willing to become the bad thing to ensure that it comes around yeah it was something like that I can't remember the exact thing but I, I, we had talked about it mm-hmm. and the second death moment like that moment like where the only people are there are Thorfinn and who's who is dying it mirrored his father the moment went with Askeled. Oh, that's true. When yeah, they showed the scene with him and his father. It was just the two of them in the scene, and then yeah, it, it was with the same with him and Askeled. Yeah, yeah, it was. That's the second dad. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, taking nothing away from it was a very sad thing, but it, you know, it wasn't a good relationship. No, no this is all a very sad thing. But yeah. yeah. Uh, it's very easy for this to become romanticized and how nice it was. It wasn't nice. No. But, uh, yeah, so now Leaf is probably going to... I imagine what's going to happen is... Because I have no knowledge of what comes next. I imagine what's going to happen is they're going to exile uh, Thorfinn mm, for trying to kill the king. Mm. Yeah, yeah, because he has to do something with him and he can't keep him there. He, I know Knut would love to keep him there because mm-hmm. he knows that Thorfinn is tormented by something yeah. and he knows he's a capable fighter. Yeah. But I don't think he can be smart and keep him because no. he he's mad at him so he has, to, he has to make an example especially after killing Asclad that no this is not okay and he's a strong king who takes decisive decisions mm-hmm. uh, people are more likely to respect cruel people very often and even though he's not cruel it, it, him he showing strength yeah. is, is, is a good step in the right direction yeah. yeah this is one thing that um, I don't know like Canute He's, he seems smart, and I feel like he's thinking through a lot of things, but now he doesn't have an even smarter person next to him like Ascalad. He doesn't have that anymore. Thorkel no. only cares about certain, like... He Let me fight someone strong. Right. I mean, it, I was surprised in this moment that he was able to help him stand up. You know, he was thinking that, okay, he's going to be all 
week about this. Let me help him out. Yeah. So that that's good to see, and maybe Thorkel would be more of a help there. But I wonder how Kaminute is gonna um, go on like without a right hand man like Askeladd. Mm. It's gonna be hard because he wouldn't. I don't think he even realized that uh, Ragnar's brother was a spy. No, he didn't. No, he didn't. Until Askeladd pointed it out, and Askeladd set up the spiderwebs and rumors and stuff. So he's gonna need a spy master essentially. Yeah. And he's still got Floki to contend with, who's not yeah. necessarily as big of a, a, a threat as the king was, but he's still kind of sly. Yeah, yeah. and he was on the king's side. Yeah. So, mm-hmm. not sure he what, might be on Harold's side. Harold's side. Yeah, because I'm not really sure what Floki wants in all of this, but he is. Yeah, he was aligned with the king mm-hmm. and seemingly aligned with Harold. Mm-hmm. So. Yeah. And there's still all the vessels that are aligned with Harold because mm-hmm. it was split. It was split. Yeah, so Canoe still has to contend with them. So they're almost certainly going to be a civil war. Oh yeah. But he has control of the army in England right now. Mm-hmm. And in right. respect of all those vassals who saw what happened. Yeah. Right. I think it's the vassals have leaned more towards um, Canute. Canute now. Mm-hmm. But Harold probably still has a good amount of vassals still loyal to him. Yeah. And it's funny because that's actually historically accurate. Is very often if the king died, it, it, whoever became the next uh, emperor, if there was a lot of sons, is typically whoever got to the capital first. <laughs> it's whoever is there, who is ever present, which is why going off a campaign would be great and all to get glory for yourself but if you're not at the capital when it's time to select the new king there's going to be a problem mm. almost every time yeah at least in medieval age but yeah uh, anything else guys? um I think Canute would probably when, in regards to Thorfinn is probably going to try and sneak him out some t- somehow because mm. I know Canute did pro- he doesn't want to kill Thorfinn no no so he's I'm, not going to kill him so I'm thinking maybe he's just like I mean, exile. Yeah, is an is a is an uh, official way to deal with him, and he doesn't have to kill him. So the only thing is, where is gonna exile him to? Um, hopefully, Leaf can follow him wherever he goes. They could just say, just he can't come back to the country. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Never set foot in England again, or never set foot in the empire again, which at this point would encompass uh, um, where well, his a, home is. A big part of Scandinavia, England, and Iceland would be a part of that, but. Who's gonna know? <laughs> yeah, I was wondering about that. When you got exiled, like who's gonna know you came back? <laughs> yeah, I, a lot of people it makes sense because they know they had noble entourage falling around. So like a noble to show up in this area, what happened? Like he's exiled. But if just some kid showed up in Iceland again, it's like, well, he's back. Okay. <laughs> no, there's no messenger that goes around. Hey, by the way, this kid can't be here. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Yeah. Yeah. I, I I think we'll definitely see something to do with Vinland, maybe traveling to Vinland yeah. in the, the next season. Maybe, I don't know if it'll be, it'll be the next season. Maybe they'll keep it for like the end. I don't know how this manga is going. But um, I would like to see something about Vinland and maybe attempts to go to Vinland. In yeah, I never bothered looking season. up if there's another season around the corner because of how recent it was when I had seen it. Mm-hmm. But usually it takes about a year before they announce they're working on something mm. and then once they announce they're working on something it's usually so another year, year out or another yeah. two years out usually mm. yeah. yeah I remember I was complaining about video games announcing things early <laughs> anime's worse anime announces things way too early yeah. years too early especially when it's like another season it's like we've confirmed season 3 no release date yet yeah. though <laughs> they almost, they almost, you can't expect them to hit the release date too yeah. if they tell you a year out it's probably going to get moved at some point Yeah. they say April okay so sometimes September <laughs> <laughs> that's usually my rule of thumb yeah. anything else guys? Um, nothing other than what a journey yeah I really enjoyed this show what would you rate this show? because um, I already have my rating you know what? For it's a it's like a historical show, historical anime. Yeah. Um, for this kind of jo- genre, I think it's excellent. I would give it an S. Mm. Yeah, that's I, I, I was it. gonna do a, a number again. I forgot. Uh, mm-hmm. I would, I would give it an A. What brings it down for you? Um, only because it's not something that I'm like you have to go watch this anime. You know, mm. it's like if. If I know people like you who are really into history or people who are really into like war strategy type animes and action animes, I would be like, yeah, I go watch this. But I'm not going to go to mom and dad and be like, you have to watch this the same way I would with Boku no Hero Academia. I did, though. Uh, the thing is, yeah, he wanted them to watch it. But it's interesting you should say that because I feel like this anime is not so bogged down with history or strategy to me. It is very approachable. Like, I am not a 
into history. I'm the opposite of him. <laughs> I I don't enjoy like watching things about history. I sometimes learning some historical facts are oh that's interesting, but it's not something that keeps my attention. But this show kept my attention because it's mostly action and um, plot, like the the story, the characters, and all of that was very very interesting. And I think even if you're not interested in history, you can enjoy the show. Mm-hmm. And that's why I said for the genre, maybe for like all anime in general, it might not be an S. But for the genre, I think it's definitely an S tier. And I put it in S tier simply because I, I feel like it's an artistic uh, masterpiece. You've got it in 24 episodes, you encompass a perfect arc. Yeah. It, it doesn't really have anywhere it drags. It's constantly going somewhere. It's true. Not any, every character hits. I'll give it that. Not every character that we come across is great. Yeah. Because there was some people that seemed out of nowhere. But because it was usually because... Details were left out from the manga. Yeah. For instance, that town that got burned down and girl with the ring. Like there just seems so many things going on with her, but yet nothing yeah. at the same time. But it's just we had this kid. We see this kid from childhood, grows up a little bit, and we get the feeling that we've seen him his whole life. Yeah. It doesn't feel like we've skipped too much of it. And for that, and all the people like Thorco, Askeladd, there's all the characters who stayed around. They were all amazing. Yeah. No character who stayed around was boring. Mm. So even the brothers. Yeah, even Ragnar, as annoying as he was, you, you understood him. You understood Canute. You understood the only person I say you don't really understand is maybe Floki. Yeah. yeah. But he he's not focused on too much. You know, we didn't see him. And even King Sven, you, you kind of get him too. You get yeah. You, you understand him just from the scenes you see him in little flashes of him just slowly walking around. You get it. He's like this malevolent force <laughs> that con- carved his kingdom, and he's just doing whatever it takes to stay, keep it alive. Yeah. So, yeah. Not even just keep it alive, he wants to keep it. Yeah. And I wonder if maybe he was like Canute for once, from the way he was talking. Mm-hmm. But he's, he's, the way to, building a kingdom isn't pretty. Mm-hmm. But keeping a kingdom may be even uglier because what happens in the shadows. Yeah. yeah. It's one of those things. Yeah. But yeah. Um, and I actually wouldn't suggest this anime to a whole lot of people. It's just I feel like uh, it's one of those shows that it's got enough story where it would get people emotionally invested. So I know like our parents can get invested into things, yeah. but it doesn't completely rip your heart out. Just maybe in the beginning yeah. it hurts you a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Anything else though? Uh, not for me. All right. Well, guys, that's the end of us a series. The next series I will start. I'm pretty sure we're choosing to do. But I don't think we'll necessarily announce it here or anywhere yet. Mm. So thank you guys for being with us on this journey. It was very fun. And guys, we'll catch you guys next time React Pact. Check out the banner on homepage if you want to see anything else that we do watch. Uh, we'll catch you guys next time. Bye! Oh, bye! Thank you very much to our patrons. Damien, Dutcholfin, Taylor Mitchell, Kay, Aldo De La Rosa, and John.